Gamer Alert! The following video contains spoilers for Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3. Be warned. Hello! Yes, I, I know, this isn't a WoW video. I'm still enjoying Season of Discovery, I'm having a lot of fun doing Ashen Vale, clearing BFD, but I'm not really doing anything that interesting. I'm not going to upload a video that I'm not fully confident I would want to watch myself. What I do have for you is probably the most masochistic thing I've ever done. A solo, jack-of-all-trades attempt at Baldur's Gate 3. Why solo? All of the other guides for jack-of-all-trades achievements were either, well, scamming the game to get the achievement for free at the end of a normal run, or were with a full party, and frankly, I don't think that's that big of a challenge. Yeah, you've got one guy who's not super great, then you have three normal characters that can hard carry you. How far can you get without that? How far can a solitary man go in the world of madness that is Baldur's Gate 3? So I spent 20 minutes agonizing over how to start the game. I opt to begin with one level of monk. Why? They've got good mobility, and I'm going to be running away. A lot. No. Because they use dex and wisdom fairly well, they make solid basic attacks, they've got fair HP, and they can use key points to get extra actions and bring big threats down quickly. At least that was my initial point. We enter the game itself, pass through a few sphincters, free a brain, fail the focus guts. We meet a mean green lady who yells at us. We meet a goth lady who needs left out of a tube, rescue the goth lady, fight some brains, hit some imps and squid guys with a stick and our fists, and then crash an evil flying boat in a cutscene. Of note, I had to restart once here because you can't send Shadowheart or Lazel to camp. There is no camp. And the imps decided to fight them instead of me. Oops. In the final fight, I just left them in the other room and did it myself, using that monk mobility for dashing to the console as soon as possible, and allowing our Mind Flayer capture to take a few extra hits along the way. After we crash, I go to clean up the brains in the wreckage of the boat without much difficulty, get attacked by an albino elf, and use my cool monk moves to break his hold and stand up. Meeting Asterian levels is up, which means it's time for our second class. Cleric? It utilizes our high wisdom score well, gives us some utility in the form of spells, and has decent hit dice to keep us somewhat healthy. We're gonna need it. We go with the Tempest domain for Thunder Wave and get some good offensive reactions, which is probably a mistake. More on that later. And I pick up a variety of offensive spells and buffs, which is definitely a mistake. More on that soon. Then we curb stomp a Mind Flayer and meet a condescending guy trapped in a glowing hole in the wall. A hand? Anyone? Tieflings are bothering Lizelle, and we seriously consider leaving her to her fate, but instead convince them to leave so we can free her from her rickety wooden cage she's somehow gotten herself stuck in. She insults us, thank you Lizelle, and we send her back to camp so we can go get our ass kicked alone by bandits. Wait, what? Yeah, we convince the ones outside to leave without a fight, but the party inside the church is a real beating. 1v5 is no fight we can take at this level, so after a few... poor attempts, it's time to retreat. We'll be back for you guys later, count on it. The Dank Crypt is a fight we can take though, thankfully. We pick the lock at the entrance, first try, monk decks, and zone the spellcasters with Dank Fog, so we can bash the sword skeletons uninterrupted. The spellcasters only have like 10 HP, so they drop pretty easily, so long as we don't, say, walk into our own smog cloud and blind ourselves. That would be stupid and embarrassing. The enemies, weak as they are, save against a large number of our spells, and I somehow don't realize this is because I suck at hitting with them. Huh. Surely that won't be a recurring theme. Regardless, they can't hit me, and my melee attacks hurt, so we sort the room out quickly enough and meet our guy, Withers, the skeleton who could respect us for money, but not really because we can't use that or we don't get the achievement, and that would be a big waste of my time. Next up, we head over to the gates of the Druid's Enclave, where not having any spells left forces me to play much less poorly and just hit things with my staff until they die, and NPCs shoot things and stab things until they die. Man, having a party is really nice. It would improve this game so much if it were designed around having multiple... Oh. Well. We enter the first settlement of the game and fail to keep this racist guy from fighting a tiefling man. 
Then meet the super racist head of the druids and keep her from fighting a tiefling child. We'd like that. No, we wouldn't. It's pointless. Times people laugh me off as a cleric. One. I murderize a bugbear on its way to assassinate this random lady, and she pays me with some kind of evil coin from hell. Great. Inside the camp, I pick up a bow that can restore spell slots for me on a crit, which is pretty cool. And a shovel, which I can dig up random crap across the map with, now that my perception helps me spot them. I somehow fail to understand why this weird cow freaks me out, probably because I'm a 9-int brainlet. Then I do magic tricks for a kid, and he responds by stealing from me with one of his horrible little friends. You were just robbed. Upon my return to camp, Asterion and I trade ideas on how to off one another should we start turning into mind flayers. We help a tiefling bard finish her sick morning ballad. That racist whiner mercenary thought you was busy with the foul bloods in Elson's Grove. He goes mask off and reveals that he was there to steal a relic called the Night Song, proving the druids absolutely right not to trust outsiders. Yay, xenophobia! Save your breath. Times people laugh me off as a cleric. Two. His disrespect for the dead rubs off on me, and I loot his boys as well as the goblins nearby. Hey, I gotta get that bread, and I'm gonna need all the help I can get in this playthrough. Further down the road, I come across a pair of cultists mourning their dead brother. They've been sent to capture the survivors of a Mind Flayer ship crash, and like the genius I am, I do not tell them that I'm a survivor of a Mind Flayer ship crash. Meeting those Nimkum Poops somehow gives me enough XP to level up. This time, I go wizard. I'll be able to scribe scrolls to cast spells using my uh, horrible int. Don't worry, I know of an item that will help with that later. I grab a slew of buffs and support spells that will help me survive fights and or escape if, when, things go south. That animal is massive, tough, and chill, so I make the executive decision that we are going to stop trying to get revenge for their dead brother, and they are going to leave before we all die horribly. We will. Thank you, truth. And with that, I think we're done with the first video. I am having an absolute blast, though I haven't hit the wall yet. You'll know it when you see it, and when I catch up to like 20 more hours of video editing. Have a good day, and I'll see you around.